Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tadaima, Terrace House Podcast, your weekly companion to your favorite show on Netflix. I am Robert Scarpanito, and I am joined here by Daily Wilhelm. Konbanwa. Jack Zapata. Aloha, it's Beach. Irishai Masa. And Colin Sparling. What? I, I'm just kind of. What? what? <laughs> I'm not. I'm just put off by what Jack said. I don't. I, I get same. you, Jack. I get it. Where, the where shirt, did that come the, from? The shirt that Tirashima's wearing in a bunch of episodes that we're going to be talking about today, it just says, Aloha, it's beach. Uh, <laughs> it made me laugh every time I heard it. Did did I miss that? You did. Maybe it was just I, it was just there and I missed it. You never. know, I missed it too, but you know why? Because Rico also wears an interesting shirt. She wears oh, the company Milk Fed. That's right. right. Which is an exclusive okay. company only in Japan. You know who else on Tara's house wears Milk Fed shirts? Don't, don't, let me guess. I think it's Sana. Yui. Uh-uh. Yui, that's Yui. right. Dang the it. Other shit stirrer from OND. This oh my week, God. We're Dude, talking it was, about. It was foreshadowing. It's wild. I don't know if it's foreshadowing, but this week we are talking about the one and only, the final, the final bit, the thing mm. we've all been waiting to talk about since we all started talking about BGITC in general. Mm. Hayato and Rico mm. and how they totally didn't do anything scandalous. And how they just had a normal relationship on the TV show. Nothing That's to see not here. What just, just a That's wholesome. Not, what were you guys watching? Wholesome twenty-nine-year-old, nineteen-year-old relationship. The most dramatic thing to ever happen on Terrace House, in my opinion. Like this. Oh yeah. This. I don't think that there was enough time given to it. Like I'm still decompressing from my watch. Like what I we're still, saying. Uh, what like when you say yeah the most dramatic thing to ever happen i i pretty much tend to agree with that because it was strung out like we didn't know like will she won't she we'll get into it later but it was like very tense there at the end on what the ultimate outcome was going to be so i do agree it was very it's more dramatic than like things like the sock incident and stuff like that you know those are like pretty it was cut and dry. genuinely shocking yeah like i i felt personally deceived yeah <laughs> that's yeah. how we all that's how we all felt daily when we initially watched it and going back and seeing it for the first time too and we'll, we'll build up to the incident but going back and watching it for the second time anyway you can really pick up on a lot of the signs that are there that like they were bullshitting us after a while okay. yeah watching it the second time you do it's kind of like watching the sixth sense the second time you know what's it's all pointing towards one end yeah, you know who the dead people are basically <laughs> is what we're yeah. saying I, so i said let's start from the beginning Let's recount this saga of bullshit Boy. and shenanigans, shall we? Mm. Mm. <laughs> bullshit uh, and shenanigans. Bullshit and shenanigans. Uh, on week 29, that's when Riko Nagai enters the house. She replaces Orisa Ohata. We hardly knew ye. Uh, yeah. And Riko is the, the, the cute little high school girl who actually won a beauty pageant that says she's the cutest high school girl in all of Japan, which, you know what, that's a little bit yeah. of a weird title to own, I... but... Good for her. I looked that up. This is apparently the 2016 was the first year that they did that. Mm. So she was the first winner. The first first. And the only coverage that I really found in English about it was on Asian Crush. And I'm just going to I'm going to read this line. And I'm going to ask you if this is an OK line. The Japanese beauty pageant's first ever winner is 18 year old. At least she's legal. Riko Nagai, nope. a.k.a. Nope. Riko Pin. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, was, pause the footage. Back it up. Wow. <laughs> At least she's legal. At least she's legal. I mean, we'll I, get there, but you gotta be, wonder. That's, I mean, no wonder she's not, crying when they're like forcing her. She's got all these middle aged dudes to be like, "Hey, put on this bathing suit, toots. God. We're gonna take some photos." There were, there were, uh, six hundred forty thousand other applicants to be the the cutest high schooler, and I'm only going Damn. to very, very cynically guess that the judges were like middle aged men. <laughs> oh, no. this is creeper status. Probably not. No. I mean, it's because because that's that's a question I had, too, is that I was really surprised that not only had she won this, I, I would guess I was less surprised about the existence of the contest and more surprised that she was then on Terrace House, which I feel is like not the place for a high school student to be. It, it's awkward. It's it awkward. is. It, it's very awkward. And 
I don't I don't know how I felt like I, I also don't know the logistics behind like what this pageant is like. I highly doubt or at least I would like to hope that there's no like swimsuit section or like weird model. I like dude, can, can I would it, expect can, there to be one. There, is, I'll be I'll be honest. There probably is. If I were uh, a betting man, I would bet uh, on the fact that there is. Because uh, do you guys think had she not <clears throat> recently come into fame because of being crowned the cutest high schooler, would they have invited a high schooler onto the show otherwise? Doubt I it. wonder. I, I don't. I mean, I don't know. Isn't the fifth chair usually in high school too, though? For on the, on the panel. Uh, the I mean, it ranges. To, it varies. Yeah. yeah, yeah it, so high schooler, like early college. Yeah, I'll tell you when it hit home for me in the house was when she was studying and she's studying like world history and the social studies book like look like a high school book. Like, you know what I mean? Like it just looked yeah. really like big, bright pictures and <laughs> it, and simple charts. And I was just like, oh, man, this seems wrong that she's doing this at Terrace House. So I this is yeah. not a person who's independent entirely. She had only lived with her mom before, which I think is, you know, the case for a lot of people that move into the house that they had only lived with their parents before. But I mean, she yeah. was to the point where like she she felt like a child. She felt like a teenager felt among like all these like like I think that would be weird, like a teenager moving in with like high school or not like college age and older people yeah Han and then being influenced there. by that yeah but, and, uh, and what is ironic about it is that she was actually the adult in a lot of ways um when thomason was around right like thomason like looked at her for advice and she seemed to be more stable anyways and able to make more sound decisions than thomason was at the time so she kind of yeah. grew up early and she was also thrown into a house with a little bit of chaos with that whole notch on stuff going on and she's like what the fuck did i get myself into look on her face I mean, when all this drama is happening around her yeah when she enters she inherently looks more like the most adult right because of all the drama she ends up getting sick and, she gets a sore throat because of the drama yeah uh and then just three weeks later we have Hayato Terashima, 29, 29, hey, oh, just 29 year old chef. Mm -hmm. um, he replaces Hikaru Ota. And his whole shtick is that he used to want to be an actor and then at some point figured out, hey, this, I can't, I'm not going to make the cut. I'm going to shift over and be a chef. Yeah. Yes. So. And and that that was like one of the more interesting scenes in in this season of Terrace House Two was when they're sitting at the table and Ta Tamosan uh, Mis Misaki just kind of throws out there like, "Hey, you used to be an actor." Which, by the way, this line of questioning was like very very probing and kind of per like very very personal. Like she was Intense. trying to like, yeah, like not really quite attack him, but almost kind of like that. But she was mm -hmm. like. You know, I know you, you you went to try and be an actor. Like, why did you give up on that? Why why did you give up on your dreams and then become Don't a chef? Give up. So you can do it. Yeah, right. so originally when I saw this part, I felt the same way. I was like, why is she coming at him? Why is she pushing the issue? It's, he's clearly upset about it. And so I kind of thought she was kind of coming at him with her claws out a little bit there. And then, I don't know why, but this latest time I watched it, I maybe I just looked at it at a different angle. But what I noticed this, this second or third or fourth time, however many times I've seen this series... Um, is that she was hearing she wasn't necessarily hearing that he made up his mind that he wants to stop in the early goings until he made it really clear she was hearing that it's really uncomfortable it's really um i have a lot of um regret about it a lot of pain about it and so i feel like in a way she was almost trying to say like well it's not too late you still can do it you don't have to struggle mm. and then he's like well i've made my decision so well yeah, look, maybe coming so. back to it now i almost can see the angle that maybe she was trying to sue them in a weird way it was not working clearly yeah, I don't think it came across the way she intended. Maybe if, yeah. if maybe that maybe that's because I don't really at this point in the house, I don't really see a uh, motivation behind why she would just go at him. Right. Mm. Yeah, you know, yeah. she didn't she, like him that much in the beginning. Yeah. She wanted to be Hansan in this situation and be very motivating. Mm. Instead, she wound up being Yuki Adachi and being like, mm. yes, dream judging. <laughs> Not that's, knowing when yeah, to stop. Yeah, I think that's yeah. I think that's a good way to put it. And I like the way that in this conversation that, of course, Hansan being Hansan jumps in. And he's like, you know, I think it's OK. And I think it's a very big thing of you to, you know, know when to give up. Yeah, it's, it on. takes a lot of uh, guts to put something up like that, you know. Yeah, you know, work, essentially, work life. this might be the only scene. No, there's a scene later on. But this is one of the very few scenes where Terashima is a decent human being. And I'm OK with his existence on this house. 
Like, Let's yeah. enjoy it now. Enjoy uh, it now, everybody. I, I respected him at the start, especially because, like, maybe I've been, it's like a refreshing take on, like, the chef after mm. you die. And I was like, oh, this guy has his, <laughs> has his shit together. And then. Yeah. And I mean, then he's like, age, age is just a number, girl. In terms of his <laughs> cheftitude, yes, he does have his his shit together, right? He can, yeah, he can chef pretty well. I mean, I want, he, yes. he, I, I would, ju- I would just like to say that, like, I don't think based on his work ethic and how good he is at being a chef now, that the whole actor career going belly up was from a lack of trying. Like, he clearly busts his ass. Who knows? Right. Yeah. I, yeah, I want to back up though to like when he first joins the house because I will give him props. I mean, he seems to be like there, kind of on a mission. He's a man of action. He doesn't waste any time. He sits down on the couch, starts talking about where Cupid's arrows are pointing. You know, he's sitting next to Marsa uh, there, and they're talking, and everyone's kind of like, "Oh, you move pretty fast, don't you?" And this is kind of where Thomason already starts to get a beat on him that he might be the player type. I think, as they mention, and you know, they they go to sleep. They all wake up the next day. Rico is at the computer and he comes up, sits next to her and basically just like kind of, you know, is friendly and like asks her out like right away, like the next morning, like morning one. I was like, dang, Mm -hmm. this guy is not worried about moving slow at all. He's there for something. You know, honestly, I'd rather him be a player than what he became. Than you a know, cradle robber. <laughs> yeah, because didn't come out looking good, dude. To yeah, me, it's, it's just, not even. I'm not even bothered so much by the age difference. It's, it's what he. It's what he does at the end. It's what bothers yeah, me the most. Because, because for me, age isn't the biggest issue here. I think it's a little iffy when you're dealing with an 18 year old who clearly isn't mature enough to understand their own feelings, and then when you manipulate <laughs> them on top of that, that's just mm. not great. Because. Uh, no. You know, they go on that first date together. They go to a meat festival, right? And after that, Rico talks to the girls and she's like, oh, I didn't feel an age gap at all. This was like a great date. You know, like this was fun. Like she can't really say for sure she's into him, right? But she was like, I had fun, which is a very kind of teenager way, I think, of understanding a date. You know, it's just like, was it fun or not? Yes. What does that mean for me? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. And she was apprehensive in the beginning, too, because she said, you know, one of the reasons why she didn't want to date someone that's 11 years older than her is because she wants to have first time experiences. You know, she wants to share those. And it's going to be hard uh, with someone who's lived so much life before. I thought it was interesting as well that when it goes to the panel, you was basically like, oh, well, when I was 18, I was dating a 38 year old. And I was like, Mm -hmm. oh, (laughs) <laughs> no, Ooh, like you just live some life do too, that. man. So that's that's almost double the the age gap. But man, she was that's, yeah doing things, and, and even before the date, a lot of people don't we don't ever recall this. We talk about Armand a lot, but this gets skipped over a lot in BGITC, where even I forgot about it. Armand actually asks Rico out, like I think before she goes on the meat festival date, and she oh. and like to the beach, and they never it just drops. It's just a loose thread. It never gets addressed ever again. And but it but it happened and it made Isn't the it, show. Oh, I remember this. Like, Go ahead, Daily. She's a, wasn't it something like she's kind of like afraid of him because he's like the foreigner with tattoos. <laughs> he's worried she is. Yeah, and then he's when worried. they when they yeah. go down to the playroom, like it's super awkward. This is like when he asks her out, it's all like yeah cricket noise. And then she's like, "So hi," and she's like, "Hi," <laughs> and it's just like one word answers, really awkward. Then he ha- somehow ends up asking her out, and then like I said, it never goes anywhere. Yeah, no. I don't think I think it's very clear to Armand that there's like no chemistry there. Like the the, the sure. thing in the playroom where he was just like trying his best to pull something out of the conversation, right? And I think it, even at one point he says, "So, uh, do you like the ocean? Do you like, yeah. do you like water? Do you like jazz? <laughs> do you like jazz?" I was like, "Yeah, damn, was dude, really bad." He um, was he was trying his best, and he's like, "We should go to the beach sometime." I think he was like he was saying it just to clear the air. I don't. I think it was a very throwaway thing. Yeah, I think that just kind of comes from Rico's inherent uh, inexperience, right? Because, mm. I mean, you've got a guy with sleeve. Like, one, he's not porcelain white. Two, he's got a whole sleeve. Like, that's just Whoa. in Japan. No, no, no. At the time, he had a, he had a, is a half sleeve. Upper well, half. I mean, yeah, but either way, he's got a that's tattoo. A that's visible. sleeve in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> it's visible, yeah. Yeah, in, in Japan, that that's wild, you know? Um, 
So yeah, that, that's kind of a plot thread that gets dropped, and thankfully so. I'd rather Hayato be tied up in this than Armand, if I'm being honest. I wonder uh, if there is some like bonus footage. Maybe they went and just got cut from the show. I just I'm curious. Maybe who knows? Uh, then Hayato and Rico go to Tsukiji Market. Another date. I mean, really, not too much happens here. I feel like it was just kind of a positive overall experience, but then it's kind of like, eh. Like, I mean, one of the eh, things eh. she says to him, and just like again, extra cringe, is like, it's funny. That you're interested in an 18 year old girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, she just straight up blank really out says it It's kind of funny. And Hi, he, just, he really just you reiterates again, you know, he doesn't flinch. He's like, it doesn't bother me. He's just let let's do it again, girl. Okay, so Bothers I'm gonna me. I'm gonna I'm gonna just gonna like uh, this is probably me outing myself a little Uh-oh. bit. <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh, but no. when I when gone. I oh, I tap my mic. When I go on dating app insert name here Mm -hmm. i don't set my age for like anyone that i'm looking for under the age of 21 personally Mm. and it's Mm -hmm. just because the idea to me of dating someone fresh out of high school is just fucking weird it's just weird that is the correct it's just response like, to I, have. <laughs> so if I'm Hayato in this situation i don't know what the i don't a diff, different culture whatever i sure but i couldn't do it i don't i couldn't it's just there's no way i don't think my conscience would let me so you guys know me i don't kink shame yeah. but no shame and kinks on this podcast and, but and also Arbanino. hayato has six years on me fyi sure uh so i i do agree that age is a number right because by the time you get to like 50 60 years old and then your your significant others 10 years younger than you sure they're 40 50 years old big whoop right yeah. so that's not an issue for me what does bother me here though is more that the, not the age gap, but where the age gap starts, because it starts at 18, which is like you're still a baby. Like, look, if you're 18 years old and you're listening, and you're like, fuck you, man. I know I'm an adult. <laughs> I I make cool. Decisions. I smoke. I'm cool. Like, shut the fuck I up. I can you buy don't lottery know tickets. <laughs> like, you can shoot a hole through a ballot, but you can't have a good relationship. That's just the reality of it. Okay? The thing is, though, the thing is, though, like to play devil's advocate here for 18 year old girls, oh, no. because here we go but like if they're just gonna date people their age then they're stuck dating 18 year old boys and 18 year old boys kind of suck i was one yeah you move right. up so i sucked a, when, when i was you, 18 I, when you I was, were older i was a dumb immature kid when i was 18 still i kind of still am but i'm just a little less dumb and yeah. immature than i was then i, mean, I was very I, stupid i yeah. think R- rico's mom was right toward the end she's she says to rico hey you're still young you should date a lot do that yes that's the smartest way sure. to figure out for sure. what you like in your significant other and so on and so forth. But when you go for a sleazy 29 year old, that is really hard to justify. Because the question is like, what what is he expecting them to have in common? Like, do, right. do they share interests? They certainly don't share a lot of same experiences other than like, ah, oh, I remember high school. It was different back then. Like, Yeah, it, I, it's a lot of that. And I think even the panel brings up that like the fact that he is already, like 29, right? They're not going to be experiencing many firsts together, right? It's going to be more him just like repeating. probably doing a lot of dates he's done before. Mm-hmm. with Rico you know what I'm saying he's retreading a lot of the same ground he's probably covered in previous relationships and that's just that's just a product of experience right that's just like comes with being in the dating scene through your 20s yeah. right but Rico's not experienced any of this and so like it's a lot of Hayato taking the lead and so it's just gonna feel really mismatched right and I think that's the- yeah the thing I really hate about covering the relationship here is that there are so many ups and downs like a lot of possible branching paths for example burns enters the house rico's like he's totally my type i so like him he's a hafu he's tall he's lean he's my type and then that branch just dies in the next episode well yeah i mean she brings up to her friends that she's not his type at all he's got eyes for thomason and so exactly it wasn't it just wasn't a mutual connection all she realized it right away so she's like well there goes that possibility there's there's just a lot of branches like that happen. And there's another example of pretty much throughout these dates, Rico's a little bit wavering about like whether she likes Hayato or not. And then Hayato starts wavering later. And it's just, it's so annoying sometimes how they're both not honest with each other, but extremely like neither, honest with each other off camera. 
Not, yeah. Like, on camera, neither seems to really like each other. It's just like, we've we've plugged into this now where we're gonna date we're gonna try this and it's like there's there's nothing that we know of that's actually keeping them together because every date that they go on is like super lukewarm and they both express misgivings to either of their friend group of friends and it's just like why that's why yeah. everything kind of started to click upon Spe- Reveal. Speaking of which, though, wasn't there another date in between the market and the cup noodles? Or is cup noodles date number two? I feel like cup noodles might have been three. I don't know. Anyone remember? I think it was the third date. Cup noodles okay. was the third. Yeah. And the second one was what? Just like a dinner somewhere? It was Tsukiji Market. Oh, that was the second date. Yeah. And then oh, they had I that saw. time that they hung out and like she was trying to study and they made the Terra Terra Bozu. Which do you yeah, guys know what that dolls. is? No, I was going to yeah, ask you about it, though. I had like little charms, yeah. That I guess because it was going to rain, and they didn't it's want to rain. It's a little charm, and you put it up on like a window to keep it from raining. And it's supposed to be a monk, and like the song, the children's song that goes along with it is essentially Creepy. like, if you don't make it sunny, I'm going to chop off your head. <laughs> chop off the Terra Terra Bozu's head. Yeah, like the monk's oh, that's head. Funny. Mm. Oh, damn. I, and that, yeah, that's one way to channel frustration. I just want to bring up how demanding Hayato is when he asks her, or really more demands her to make a Teru Teru Bozu. Like, it's, he's very pushy at this point. Yeah. Dude, they made it creepy I, looking. That's all I, I know. I think that just speaks to, like, overall, I even when they do go out and we see them in certain scenes, I never truly feel like there's actual chemistry there it was just a lot of hesitation but this was like the this was the phase of their relationship where it was still like very innocent and very transparent like they weren't really hiding anything yet at this phase i've got my theories that about when that's was. about when that switch flips though i mean right yeah. now in the, at this stage of the show they're just your normal run-of-the-mill everyday terrace house couple yeah they're different in age and stuff but they're just dating they're just awkward they're just trying to feel things out um yeah they go to that cup of noodles thing and, and that's where they run into their big uh, speed bump. You know, that mm. that for me, that's when I thought when I first watched it, this is it. It's over. That's yeah, it's because it was in that scene where they they sit down and they're eating to my recollection and they get to talking about what you do and what you don't do. That's considered in a relationship. Um, things like holding hands like Rico's like, oh, I wouldn't hold hands with someone that i'm not in a relationship with i i can see that especially from coming from an 18 year old that's not very experienced i can see that but like the part where that confuses me i think is the part that confused Hiroshima too where she's like i won't go watch fireworks i won't go to a yukata festival i won't go to amusement parks unless we're in a relationship and right that seemed and far reaching right and that's what that's where Hiroshima felt like Donk, he did that with yeah, his hand right in front of his face. Like she just yeah. closed the door right in front of my face. Like why, why even bother now? It's hopeless. She's shutting me out. This is her nice way of telling me to get lost, basically. Right, and I, I think that it was just her not realizing what the hell she was saying. I was, obviously, as we find out later on, and so Terashima's dead quiet on, on yeah. the drive home back to the it house was they took all their <laughs> cup of noodles to. that she was wearing they had like six cup of noodles, of and, noodles. <laughs> yes yeah, so she was like covered and draped in it and you could just hear the bags rattling in the background the, the car was so quiet i have a i have a question for you guys do you think what she was saying about like oh i wouldn't hold hands i want to go to amusement park i want to go on a you caught the date like with someone that i wasn't dating do you think that's unreasonable of her or I like don't think, naive i don't think that like in and of itself what you said is unreasonable by any stretch but going to see one fireworks of those... you have to be my boyfriend to see fireworks with you that's well, a little far stretching yeah maybe a little but like i think it's the context in which she said it right mm-hmm. because even because we go to learn later on that yeah she does like terashima to some degree right mm-hmm. and she wasn't she trying didn't... to close the door in his face she just right she just of... didn't realize that she was closing the door in his face in experience by saying, what it comes by saying those things in that context right because yeah. i think what terashima was looking for in this conversation was affirmation that she liked him right of course yeah right. he's they're still in the early goings here and you know what I right mean, everyone's line daily is different like if that's the, how they are mm-hmm. then okay then stick to it the thing is i think that 
that's not we come to find that's not necessarily how she is she's just doing a bad job at communicating but if someone's got i mean yeah everyone's free to draw whatever lines they need to in terms of right right i think so yeah for me it just like brought back up the kind of like lens here that i think we forget about in the fact that she's an idol she's a very public figure mm-hmm. and or yeah it would be anyway, benefit yeah. the cutest high schooler in japan to be very innocent and say things like that it felt very much like if she didn't say that it'd almost be a scandal yeah i see what which, you mean which is probably why i was a little like it was so in some some people might say stringent right mm. you know um it just kind of fits her character the you know the idol Riko no guy, I not do. the real person Riko no you, guy. But then let me pose this question. Do you think she would have said that stuff that way if she hadn't been on camera? Probably not, but I'm just cynical. Okay. Okay. Uh, what, guys? Uh, and, hello? Who's to say? Yeah, and to be um, also on the other side of the corn here, Terashima, you know, he is posed the same question. He's like, look, as long as we have feelings for each other, I'm fine with anything you know if before being official and of course he would say that mm. but um just want to point that out as well too yeah i mean but i mean like come on almost any guy would say that right it's like mm. not to be a blanket statement but i mean come on right uh he's nonetheless trying to ride the wave depends on what he's after it, if mm. does he really like her or is he just after something right yeah but so at this point hayato is less than lukewarm about rico he's kind of he kind of gives up on the idea of romantically dating her. Whereas Rico claims she's more interested in Hayato now, right? And this is where the next speed bump comes in. Marsa enters the house and she immediately goes for Hayato. Like, <laughs> even though she was a plant for Armand. <laughs> yeah, but she right. is straight up into Hayato. They do the whole summer pasta thing. And it's like, clearly, this is a threat for Rico. I mean- the timing is like interesting here too as well in terms of the shake over this house. I mean, one thing I just want to back up real quick is like I think the night before Martha gets there, like give Terashima a little bit of credit. He says to um Rico, he says, Look, that's fine that we have different beliefs. Just be yourself. Like don't mm-hmm. change. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I want to give him at least some kudos for that. And then, like you said, enter Martha the next day. And it all shakes everything up. Yeah. Uh I don't know. It doesn't doesn't really shake up too much though, right? Like they do this, they do the summer pasta thing and it's fine. Hayato is still a little awkward. And this is where I think it starts getting to this point where Hayato is hiding too much from the camera, which, you know, I I can't be like, Hey, show yourself more on the camera. Right. Like, that's just like, who am I to say that? I'm just a viewer, but he does it. He holds all of his cards so close to his chest that it's really hard to pin down what he likes, what he doesn't like, what he wants to do, what are his goals in the house. Right. And mm. it kind of culminates in uh, the camping trip. Real quick, before we get to that, though, this is where Yuki's mom comes to the house and visits. Rico's mom. Sorry, I said Yuki. Rico's mom comes to the house and visits. And this is the first time I think we had a parent actually like in the house. Right. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I, her adorable. mom seems really cool. Yeah, she seems really cool. She drinks. She'll get drunk and she'll call Rico <laughs> Pin up. And I think that's pretty funny. She meets Terashima for the first time face to face, reveals that they've talked over the phone a few times drunk. Yeah, that's oh, the boy. weird thing, right? Is they've talked a lot. <laughs> yeah. Look, so. I'm just saying, if if you're trying to date someone, usually you end up dating them before you talk to any other parents. It's interesting. Yeah. I feel like she wouldn't. I feel like she told her mom everything yeah they have a best friend I feel like kind of her relationship. Mom i get that yeah i get yeah, that definitely sense. best friend relationship between rico and her mom yeah her mom's really sure. cool actually i don't know she's she proves pretty cool throughout this whole thing i mean put yourself in her position like you know she's got an 18 year old daughter never lived alone before never really had a serious boyfriend before or maybe two years ago she dated some guy but you know like when you're 16 you're dating it's not the same um, but yeah, they see him face to face. I think it's funny because the, while they're waiting for this is when we're waiting for Burns to come back and not tell anyone his results of uh, his driving test. But oh boy. they go all the girls go down to the girls room while they're waiting. And I love how Thomason is like, so what do you think of the men's? <laughs> Like you mistake like the men's. the men's and like it was like wait you said the wrong word it's just one of the men so I don't know it just made yeah. me laugh when I saw that part yeah yeah uh, but at the camping trip right we visited this 
for the past two episodes now because like we've been saying everything happens here this big... yeah this is a super important trip yeah watermelon so... in the river happens that's all we need to know that's true so while okay, moving on while yep. masaki and burns resolve their first i would argue kind of childish spat and while arman asks marcia out again we see hayato and rico Alone. at the campfire All of themselves. love of summer love and dude and... I, I i was just saying like man campfire makes everything look better like mm. everything yes. looks good with campfire light everything is my argument and they looked good and it seemed romantic yeah. and i just like the scene so rico asks him out this is i believe the first time in their courtship process where she's the one who makes the move right right and she's yeah, super nervous times, yeah. she is but she still says hey you know you want to go to the festival watch some fireworks together and hayato is being this coy little bitch he's just like are you sure with me what it me well i mean he are genuinely sure? he generally doesn't think she likes him like he like i said he feels like he has the door shut in his face so he he does though make her like say it over and over again i will say that i will concede yeah that. And it's she's gratuitous like, she's, she wants to wear yukatas and he's like whoa for real are you sure yeah and With so me? that's a big step for her. That's like a big, um, it took a lot of courage for her to do that, right? And she definitely stepped out of her comfort zone um, for that. And I think this is where I was going to say, maybe not at this very moment, but my theory is that the switch flipped at that Yukata festival is mm. where he said, we must protect and preserve your image at all costs. That's my theory is when it happened during the fireworks show. I, I have some Ooh. stuff to bolster that theory. But first, let's visit this real quick. Right after that campfire date is where Hayato and Marsa go out on that lunch date. And this is where Hayato mm. shuts down. the. He shuts the door on it was Marsa. Rough. It was rough. It's over. Closing yeah. doors. I, I, so, I, I just saw that recently. And he's like, so can you tell Armand about this? Like about this about us having lunch of course can you tell rico he's like oh yeah i'm gonna tell her but we can never mm -hmm. do it again <laughs> yeah and it's at this date that or well, i mean i get date is a strong word but it's at this lunch that hayato claims he's worried about rico's career that's where he plants the seed in the viewers mm. right yes that that's the first career mention. is very important and what I, does martha say it's so annoying because it's so true she says isn't that for Rico to decide, mm -hmm. not you, young Terashima. Mm -hmm. And how true yeah. is that? And I, I think with a lot of this stuff too that's happening, like even before the actual scandal itself comes out, I think a lot of uh, why my Martha, Martha's uh, attraction to Terashima kind of drops after this, like takes a hard drop. Or well, has to. I she doesn't have a choice. Right, she doesn't have a uh, have a choice. Dude, but I it was think... awkward too. With like that when she's got the cup up to her face and she, the way she swirls the yeah. drink and sips it and then gives him the thumbs up right by the cup. She's like, "Oh Don't yeah," worry. I was like, "Kill!" I was like, "Kill the scene, please." I'm done. Oh, I'm yeah. done. I, I like, can't oh, take much. Of... It's it's so tense. Uh, it was rough. Stop. The thumbs up was like, "Fuck you, man." <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like, like, and it's the middle up. finger. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it and, was. and it was like super unattractive to her that he was trying to play like fucking. I don't know, stepdad, dad to Rico. Oh, God. Yeah, like, that's. Yeah. yeah. Like, he's better like. than everyone here. He's the oh. superior yeah. one, you know? Exactly. Exactly. I'm just and, thinking of her. Though, <sighs> had, had Rico, like, not been in the house and it was Martha instead of Rico, I think that Hayato probably would have thrown himself at Martha in an alternate yeah, timeline. Who I mean, knows? Probably. I think it could. I think it would have been a thing. He was there. He was there to for love, for sure. Mm, yeah. I would have rather had that drama of like him suddenly being like, oh, actually, I'm into Martha instead of this 18 year old girl. Like, Aww. that's a heartbreak. I that wouldn't have broken my heart. Yeah, but that's not what been... happened. Y'all <laughs> would have been it wouldn't have been as bad. I think I think Hayato would have came out way better that way. He would have. Yeah. 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 Although Rico does have a pretty bad day during this week as well this is where she does that gravure idol shoot where she's wearing oh my god pretty tight bikini and all those <sighs> middle-aged dudes are taking pictures of her and are just like yeah that's good that's good can they're you, good, it's like good. Can you pose that way yeah. okay, okay let's it's take the hoodie the off now yeah can you take yeah, the hoodie it's off at yeah Tara's okay. house. hey can you could you lean forward just a little bit it's gross oh yeah i can't believe she starts at crying house. yes uh, that's where I, that's where I was like, yeah, this is kind of, this is fucked up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Super this ain't cool. Up. 
No, this ain't man. cool, man. And her agency is like, well, listen, you need to take every job you can right now. And so I think this is which good is for your so career. yeah. They pressured uh, her into it. Yeah, sleazy see, sounding. That's the really fucked up thing is that if you want to be a model, that's a pretty common step in Japan to being a model. Yeah. So so actually, I, I saw a thread on uh, the subreddit, the Terrasol subreddit. Shout out to you guys. Um, Whereas apparently I didn't know this, but there was a point when Mizuki, like the first Mizuki that we had in the show, one of the oh, part of the original lineup of the show, I was saw that, at yeah. one point a graveyard model. Yeah, I saw that too. Mm-hmm. And and I, like she kept that on the DL, like she is not proud of it um, because I think even Armand makes a comment towards her, like something about her being a model, and she, and, <laughs> and she's just like, oh, what what makes you think that? <laughs> a sweat bead going down her her brow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like, and it was just hard seeing like listen if she was all for it and like owning it like man I'm gonna do this bathing suit thing I don't give a fuck like I would have been cool with it like hey man girl power all day but the fact that she clearly was uncomfortable with it made oh, me yeah. super uncomfortable I was like I'm not gonna I don't want to see this this is it felt too voyeuristic for me right and, and, and they, they went with the very like man eyed kind of panning shots too and so it was just not it was not tasteful the, I have the the translated interview from the photo shoot. Oh, Ooh. you do. And a um, question: The scene broadcasted in Terrace House when you cried really left a mark. Rikopin says, "Yeah, it did. There was a lot of like conflict conflict against doing it with swimsuits. Whether I got great shots and whether I've responded well to the expectations of the staff that I was worried about." But I've decided that I'll do this, and it might lead to other jobs. In the end, I'm glad I took this on. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think it's still well, just like shit. I gotta. I have to do this in order to lead to other jobs. In a way, it's like if you don't do it, we have a hundred other girls that are gonna do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's just the shitty pressure. thing about yeah, the modeling sure. industry in Japan. You know. Right. Right. So <sighs> after that very uncomfortable moment we go to another uncomfortable moment but uncomfortable in a different way where we see hayato and rico on that hill it's nighttime they're both wearing yukata it's all the the ingredients for a good date yeah and they watch the fireworks and it's just so quiet you yeah. know it's, it's not even like the comfortable oh they're two friends who are comfortable being quiet around each other this is just like Everything is dead. I'm dead. It's They're dead. dead. I, I it's remember that the dead air. I remember the mat they're sitting on during dead. the fireworks show. The mat was particularly shitty. <laughs> I remember it was like not a comfy looking mat. It was just like the mat was shitty. Their relationship yeah. <laughs> is shitty. Like right. the that fireworks air was so dead. dead. That's they're, the narrative they're... that they're giving us. And for whatever reason, the editors of the show are playing along with this. But that's yeah, the narrative they, they're giving us. But like I said, told... this is where I think he came up with the scheme of what they're gonna do. How he can yeah, have his cake and eat it too. I don't know how they created such dead air that even like it kind of just quieted the fireworks that were exploding in the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was bad. So yeah. it's after this date, and this is where Hayato starts setting the setting the little building blocks, right, toward hiding this this awful, awful Wait, scandal. Not to hmm. not to interrupt here, but the way that we've been talking about this has been the onus is entirely on Hayato. It's not that he concocted the plan. Hold on, they concocted the the deception. Is yeah, that what you're saying, so, Billy? that's kind of my theory. I do think they both concocted this deception c- together. I'm just saying this is where we mm. start seeing Hayato lay his side of the. Interesting. Okay. I thought I like, for some reason deception. in my head I just see this as being Hayato's bag because Ooh, no, no, she no. never really she never really. Um, brought up that she was worried about her image very much he brought it up though to martha yeah i yeah i think the the reason why i don't think it necessarily was just him that was concocting it but i certainly think like i certainly think hayato was dropping way more hints mm. you know what they I'm go saying? home after this date after the shitty fireworks you caught a date they go home and proceed to kind of like set the stage and kind of badmouth each other and or may, basically well, like make everyone so, think that it's not going anywhere and it's stagnant. Yeah, cuz Hayato tells the boys in the boys room, I just I see Rico as a sister. And She's that's a normally uh, a relationship uh, killing move. I right. see that person as my sibling, like that's it, done. It's that's over. Done. Yet, yep. In Japan, there's an entire anime about little sisters, etc. Incest and- is wincest. Um 
But Oof. then after Hayato tells the boys, yeah, she's basically a sister to me. This is the scene I want to hone in on, okay? It's Hayato and Rico sitting at the kitchen table, and this is where they both agree, like, there's no chemistry. Between, like, this is over. There's not much oh, going on here, right? Staged. Now, here, here is where this is, this is like, a fine detail, but I swear, this, this blew my mind the second time I saw it. It was one of those, like, I noticed this on the second time, and I will forever not, not notice it. <laughs> so, they're talking. They're like, yeah whatever like we're probably not going to end up dating and you know we know as viewers hayato's coming at this with an angle of yeah like i'm worried about your career i don't want to mess up your career as an idol right mm -hmm. but rico's the one who brings that up first she's Be the one who initiates the conversation and she's the one who first says oh it's because you see me as a sibling right uh, see i think she's like uh, yeah yeah you're right uh, I think she was coached. I think she yeah, was coached. Was definitely off. She was fed that previously. shit from the start. Yeah, she, she was, was coached off camera. That. We need to go by ourselves in the kitchen, have this discussion in front of the cameras to maintain the charade. Yeah, because it would it would be a lot more believable if Hayato was going to brought up like, I just can't. I see you as a sister. I want your career to succeed. But instead, it's Rico saying, oh, you don't want to date me because you see me as a sister, right? Yeah, and it's not like, yeah, and Rico doesn't exactly seem crestfallen at all either after this conversation. Pretty no, sir. sneaky, sis. Mm -hmm. No, They're sir, I don't like it. Actors. I don't like this. If anything, this scene makes me realize why Hayato didn't make it as an actor. Shots fired. Oh, ow. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, then after that date, he, or not that date, after that little charade, if you will, uh, Hayato goes back to the playroom and talks to the boys again, and he breaks the news, quote unquote news, that he's, you know, like, Rico and I aren't going to be together. That's it. End of story. But even then, the way he ends that conversation isn't that definitive, right? And mm. Burns attacks him for this. Burns is like, if you don't want to date Rico, you need to straight up tell her right. it's over. Right. Otherwise, yes. you're playing around with her. And the real talk, that looks extra bad since she's 18. For yes. real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, they're both adults in the eyes of law, but in this dynamic here, he's the adult in this relationship. Yeah. And then yep, the and this yeah. isn't the first time that, well, this isn't the only time Burns like gives him shit for this too. He he's definitely the first to catch on. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think maybe Burns was a little bit uh like more prone to giving Hayato some shit for this because as we find out in the next scene here that we're gonna talk about, Burns is getting real fed up with the fact that the way Hayato and Rico act off camera doesn't quite match with the way they act with each other on camera. <sighs> well, wait, way. what about the mm. real quick, what about the scene in the playroom where Burns is talking to uh hayato about this we just yeah we we just talked about that oh i thought you were talking about the scene in the boys room i mean yeah there are multiple like yeah there are both scenes where that happens here's but the it's, part in gotcha. editing so i the think show. it kind of builds here's the part in the way the show's edited that kind of like because we all know this because we're seeing it secondhand right mm -hmm. but like daily had her first time experience with this and so i'm curious like daily like when this came up it was kind of awkward. It was like we were focusing more on like um, Burns. We were focused on Thomason, and then it went to the panel to talk about some other topic, and then it just goes back to the table, and all of a sudden Burns is just pissed. And to me, the first yeah. time watching it, it seemed to come out of the blue for me. Like he's yeah, just mad about I, something, and I'm going to talk about this right now. And I'm like, what? Without any right. context. I was pretty confused. Um, I like in hindsight, I read this as like. There was genuinely no idea that this was going to happen. And thus, like, they couldn't really do anything to edit that in order to reflect, like, a build up to it. Mm -hmm. So, but I, yeah, I was very confused. I was like, especially because, like, Burns, like, he he's pretty chill. Like, he's yeah. definitely not nearly as chill as Armon, who can't move his face half the time. But, yeah. like, he's he, he doesn't seem like he's going to yell at someone in the house. Right, but and he's you, pretty livid. He's like you said, he's pretty lively. Like, man, we got to have this talk right now. And he was really leading the discussion and the confrontation and calling them into the kitchen. Yeah, you get a sense that I mean, he's not about to punch someone or anything, but he's very no, passionate no. about what he's talking about. You know? He needs he's, a crump to express his anger, guys. He does, but he couldn't crump. There was not enough space to crump here, so he had to no. crump with his mouth. Yes. 
and now i'm kind of <laughs> like, scared of what that means uh oh no <laughs> same but, uh like, but nonetheless we're finally here we're at the incident right here they're at the I, kitchen table yeah i get being upset as like a fan certainly about like i have been deceived but i guess i wasn't as understanding of like Burns was straight up mad about it, not just like, what the heck, dude? Like, I'm confused. What's going on here? Like, he was upset, upset. I Is that, is that, am I being weird? Is that like a weird thing for me to think that was weird or like? No. Well, I, it just like, comes out of the blue. It was blue. a very it's strong like, reaction. So, yeah, like, why no. are you so mad? Like, what's going on here? I was confused too the first time I saw it. No, and but yeah. I mean, when, once I knew what he was upset about, like. You still thought he was too mad? I was, I, I was surprised that he had as strong of opinion as he did, I guess. I mean, yeah, so, I mean, you don't know what's happening off camera, but one thing I, one right. point I want to bring up here is that growing up at, on Western reality TV, to me, it's such a crazy concept to think that something can happen in a reality TV show that's off camera that can be held, you know, back. And cause to me, I'm just like, Oh, clearly we know everything. This is reality TV. There's no way they can hide them. The cameras are never off. The cameras follow them everywhere. It's not the case in Terrace house. They easily can hide stuff and it happens all the time. And it's something that bothers me about the show, honestly. Uh, and we've addressed it before, but so this was like a whole, this is a whole new territory for me. This is the first time anything like this ever happened in any reality show I've ever seen. Um, right. especially to, on this I, scale. I'm right there with Jack too. Cause uh, you know, BGITC is my first experience with Terrace House, right? So watching the series leading up to this point, you know, we've gone through the whole rigmarole of almost the entire series up to this point. We have a general sense of the quote unquote rules that are set. You know, the show is unscripted. The sh you know, everyone seems to be relatively normal people. And then here is this fourth wall breaking moment in a way, right? Where like all of this shit happened off camera it's an issue. We need to have a discussion about it. All the rules is either like, real or perceived. Right. And so now all of the rules up until this point have been broken. Yeah. You just three is up and the table here, basically. Right. All exactly. Off. Right. Like so, it never even occurred to me, like much like Jack, that something like this, this massive could happen off camera. So since seeing this scene, I've always looked at Terrace House as it's definitely not scripted, but it's it's still scripted kind of right because yeah, there's, there's an, it's guided it's guided it's guided, it's guided. Yeah, that's yeah, a the, better word for the it producers mm. can kind of tell them what to do and say hey don't talk about this or that until we're in the tape we're in the the house filming right and or like hey go to the kitchen and start talking about this right there's definitely that but there's also it coming from the cast members because the cast members themselves can say hey the cameras are off right now but let's plan you know, maybe like on this date that we're going on, <laughs> yeah. let's plan to do X, Y, Z. Like that's just naturally going to happen. And I think that's just the fact of, of Terrace House because these people know they're on TV. Like as much as you want to say, oh, it's totally unscripted, totally natural, like bullshit. Like these people yeah. know they're on TV. They know and that what they do will increase or decrease their Instagram followers and their clout. It's just kind of how it works. Yeah. And the thing about Burns and Armand here in this interaction, when they are confronting them, they even tell them, they're like, listen, if you're going to hide it from us, then go outside the house and do it. They're not yeah. even mad that the deception is happening. They're helping. They're trying to help them, like, make it an actual deception. But what they're what Burns is really mad about. And I think is the fact that they have to play along on camera. Mm -hmm. mm. Be, and even though they know what's going on, they don't want to come across as lying or, or feel like they're acting you know so they're they're playing party to it and that that's really the issue here but again in reality they're like listen just just really hide it guys you're not doing a good jo enough job of hiding it it's what the crux of this incident is which blows my mind again well yeah, it's also it's multifaceted just... right because misaki also says like hey how can you guys kiss if you don't even define your feelings right so she's also being like, judgmental have we even said it yet and that's the thing. I think they did. It's just off camera. All the juicy stuff is off camera here. I mean, dude, they and it's funny because Rico Peen is like she's laughing a little bit, like half laugh is smiling when they're like, we seen you. I've seen you kissing near the elevator. Uh, we know that you wait till we all go to bed, uh, you know, and then Armand was like, I've woken up at four o'clock to go to either to work or the gym. I can't remember. And he goes and I see Rico Pin in your bed there. And it's like, whoa, whoa. And she's trying not to laugh. Right. And like, oh, man, I'm busted here. And she but she keeps like 
eye daggers over at Terashima to see what happens. He just has this look on his face like deer in the headlights, and that's how he acts. He just clams up. He's under pressure. It's really up to him to like speak up here, and he fucking falls flat when it counts the most, and that's why I hate this guy. Drops the ball. Guys, you got to give him credit. He's busy drinking water. Oh yeah! God, he so had to drink out of that glass. He didn't yeah. say what, ten anything. Times. He was like, "I like I'm drowning. I can't <laughs> speak right I'm, now." Yeah. Sorry, can't hear you. I think I think <laughs> even okay, even to this point, right where we 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 hit this point as viewers, where now we know that all bets are off, tables been flipped, rules are broken, uh, and then for for the cast members. It would have even it wouldn't have not even been that bad up to that point, even with all that build up, if Terashima had just taken ownership of what had happened, right? Yeah. Like and and kind of like guided the way along with Rico to be like, Yes, that happened. Like we fucked up. We should have taken it outside the house. Just like, own it. Yeah, just own because that's all you can do. Everyone has witnessed it. There is absolutely no denying it. Right. It's not like there is a debate to be had. It, like yeah. it clearly happened. All you can do is own it. Right. And uh, apologize and move on. And also, I would think, too, that it probably hurts, you know, f- for Burns and Armand and, and all the other girls like to be like so openly deceived, too, because they are lying to their face. You know, yeah. they're coming back like, I don't think you yeah. as a woman, you know, oh, we're just going to be friends. They're both doing, they're both setting this up. Yeah, it's disrespectful. And, they're not, and, and Terashima's uh, excuse is super lame, too. He's like, I overanalyze things. Like, dude, you didn't analyze enough, you know, as Tom yeah, really? brought up. She's like, bro, you didn't think it through enough. And he's like, yeah, that's true. That's why we're here. Fuck. It's like, dude, overanalyze. You're just thinking too much about saving your own ass. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. If he really on. wanted to save his ass, he would have, you know, told the, 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 the members of the house and he would have told Rico that, like, hey, we need to take this outside of the house. If he was truly that that bullshit excuse he kept bringing up of worrying about her career and blah, 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 blah. If they were actually true, they would have been going outside the house and we wouldn't have even known the better of it. The crime here is that I'm sure you guys all agree that he just did not have her back when she needed him to speak up. She oh, was the one offering the explanation. Yeah. She was the one apologizing. He sat there drinking that water left and right. And, dude, it just really... You know, when the pressure was on and again, when she needed the most, he just fell flat. And like I was putting myself in this in the seat of like a big brother, like if because I have a little sister. Right. And it's it's like if someone did that, what he did to her at that table, if someone did that to my little sister, I'd want to do something bad to that guy. Like I just have all respect for him right there. He was never going to redeem himself in my eyes. Yeah. He couldn't get rid of his pride for two seconds. It's so unfair that he's he's literally like 30 years old sitting at this table acting like he can't speak to anything and the 18 year old who's already proven herself to be like super mature is the one that has to explain everything yeah in this in this interrogation he was the kid in this situation he was like a kid who had been sent to the principal's office and Mm -hmm. the principal is just giving him a tongue lashing and what's tragic here oh hell yeah (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry. And what, what's really tragic here is that had this gone a different way, they might have actually been maybe falling in love. They were definitely falling in lust, at least. Mm. I mean, I mean, she was sleeping in his bed. I don't know if what that ne- necessarily implies, if it implies anything, but they were definitely crossing that line of being physical. They were taking the next step. She gave him the green flag, essentially, when she's like, I want to go watch fireworks where the Yukata, uh, you know, I, I'm open to that now. And yeah. gave him the green flag and then off to the races they went. And it's just like they could have actually maybe been falling in love until this happened. There could no. have been a much better transition from faking it to actually being real. Yeah. And that didn't happen. Oh, Hi, guys. Nope. My name's Robert. I've been quiet for the past two, Hi, three Robert. minutes because I have a theory. <laughs> He's like, I haven't been counting. Robert's don't worry. Theory. Hey, okay, so, so, so Robert has been hyping up this theory. For all week, uh, I, yeah, at least a week now. So I, I'm just going to uh, toes an antihero. Oh no. God, N- what? Nani the fuck? hear me out. All right, I'm gonna, cro- I'm gonna cross. Yeah. I'm gonna cross Nani my fingers fuck. now, and I'm gonna lean back, and I'm, I need to hear this. <laughs> He's an hear antihero, like the Dark Knight. <laughs> hear me out, okay. Listen. Clearly, based on the past five minutes of discussion here, Hayato comes out looking way worse than Rico, right? Mm-hmm. One billion percent way worse. Like he is the ultimate villain here. Rico is 
somewhat responsible, but she comes out looking better, right? So my theory is, after the fireworks concert or fireworks uh, festival, they, they were the got fireworks. after the fireworks. They got a little horny, and you know when you get horny, your feelings take over, or your your lust takes over. Hormones. And something some things probably yeah, hormo- happen. Yeah, hormo- yeah, hormones <laughs> take over, and things probably happen. And at this point, maybe the morning after, right? Hayato's brain went into like, you know, that scene from The Hangover with all the math equations and shit. Oh, God. <laughs> he realizes he needs to come up with a plan to save Rico. And not he really him. didn't. And he really didn't. But here's but the he thing. Did. Yeah. He saved Rico's career in that how much worse would it be for her as an idol to continue to date? Did she sign a contract? That's a real question, because idols often do have to sign contracts like three years. I can't date. Like K pop, that's a very standard thing, right? If she's on a contract, then I understand a little bit. But if it's really just up to her whether or not she wants to terminate it, then that's what everyone's been saying this whole time. Terashima, it's not mm. for you to decide, it's for well, her to decide. So, Don't regardless of whether she signed either. a contract, she clearly has fans. Like, she has enough yeah. fans to be considered an idol, right? She does, yeah. And Pico-pino. those fans would have left her if it turned out that she was sleeping with a guy or at least being, you know, scandalous with a guy. And continues to do so after the show. But the fact that Hayato takes the fall here, even actively looking like a shit bag when uh, everything is revealed and all he does is drink water, like it makes it that much easier for Rico's fans to pin all of the blame on Hayato and not their dear goddess Rico. See, you're thinking that he, your theory is that he is so smart, he outsmarted everybody. Where my theory is he's like way too cowardly to even realize what's going on. I just think he was just a loser at that. I mean, I no. get what you're saying. Like, I'm going to jump in front of this bus. I'm going to do this. I'll be the Kevin Costner or Whitney Houston in The Bodyguard. Yeah. And so I get it. It's, it's valiant. It's brave to put that on the internet, Robert. But I don't know. Do you have anything else to support him? Because I just think he's an <laughs> idiot. That's how no, I he's, about him. he's definitely an idiot because uh, he let his lust get to him, right? He made the mistake. I think he did the best damage control for Rico and not necessarily for himself. Because if he wanted the best damage control for himself, he would have totally spoken up. Like, look, he's 29 fucking years old. He works enough to be the like one of two people heading a chef restaurant, right? Like, he's a smart fucker. He knows what he's doing. So there's I also no don't way. Di- I, I hear you. I hear you. There, I also don't want to diminish the shittiness of one of the sentences that was said here just a minute ago where if if Rico and this is real I acknowledge this is real in Japan but I still just need to bring this up if Rico Peen cannot be single otherwise she's going to lose all her fans and fuck the fans like do you really want fans that are only your fans if they're if they think that they can get with you and date you like I understand like the the business reality of it like I get it but like there are going to be they're they're not all going to leave right. There's still going to be some diehard fans, and those are the ones that really like you for who That's, you are, not just because you're sexy and single I, and in a bathing suit. I gotta say though, because of this specific kind of fans that I'm sure she has, it's like um, I wrote something about like um, this girl on Twitch. She hid her. Uh, a parent supposed still I just still don't even know if she's actually married or not but there was this big hullabaloo that was like oh my gosh you're actually married you've been fooling us all like people on here genuinely thought that they could like get with you and then those people Ooh. turned around and started sending her death threats because they felt oh. so betrayed it's like you you're given a lot of credit to like the fans. The I deception guess, is one situation. thing. But these, these are different, though. The deception is one thing. What I'm saying is, like, if she just is publicly, like, out, like, yeah, I'm dating. Like, I'm dating people. I'm not not dating. That's all I'm saying. But the, what the Twitch girl's doing was active deception. I feel like these are totally different issues here. Well, it's, it, that's, it, just it, the, so that's just the problem with the, the culture in general, Japan. Like, there's nothing we can do to change right. that. I feel like no, it's no. kind of a static It's factor. shitty, though. I'm just trying to it's, point it yeah, out. Yeah, very shitty, yeah, for sure. I, I mean, mm-hmm. if. I, I think the idea here is that I mean, there especially online, there is definitely those anonymous entitled people that are like, you know, I'm entitled. You, you know, to me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I bought your CD. Uh, I own and, you now. Yeah, pretty much. And yeah. and so the the company that she works for, and the idea of her being an idol, the idea is that they want to take those volatile fans that are actually whales you know they're financial whales mm. that are willing to throw a ridiculous amount of money because of that entitlement right Ugh, so, so slimy 
it is it's gross it's disgusting and it's definitely taking dirty money but it's money money all the same and yeah. so with her being in in that relationship yeah she's gonna she's probably gonna lose quite a few of those those quote unquote whales um and I get it to Robert's point I think his theory I mean it's plausible I think it's just as plausible as any other theory if you want to make sense it, all the credit in the world <laughs> Yeah, I I'm not saying we do it like I mean I can't say definitively, but it's a plausible theory in that he is the person in this relationship that has the private life, right? The fact that all this shit happened, I mean, he already has the really good chef job. I mean, he's trying to open his own restaurant. He probably makes good money, mm. right? I, yeah. I'm with yeah, I'm with Thomas on on this where like he just didn't think it far enough. He just thought, oh, quick way we yeah, can make out and didn't. do stuff, and and we don't have to worry about your job. Here, let's just do this. I just don't think he thought it through at all. I guess, but re- but the theory is interesting. Yeah, regardless of whether or not it was premeditated, which I think maybe it could have been because Rico came out of this looking way better than he did to the point that it's almost like she was she was kind of martyred by the situation it's like mm-hmm. she was the yeah. one that was taken advantage of and we very conveniently forget that like it takes two to tango in this situation and keep <clears throat> things secret but in a sense i mean she was you know the more naive of the two the person who hasn't been in an adult intimate relationship before so it is easy to put all the blame on him and maybe in some ways right too the the, the relationship didn't die at that table even though it should have, it really died in the boys' room when they had the one-on-one. That was fucking painful. Yeah. When she, that's and that's that's where I, the big brother in me, went from just like fuck that guy to like no, fuck that guy up. Like the way <laughs> that she was, the way that relationship or came crashing down in the room. That's another far reach, guys. Like in order for this theory to be sound, we have to, uh, we have to assume that that was all an act and fake. And I don't, I don't think so. But that, well, that was uh, genuine uh, idiocy. Robert, from, from Robert, can I? Robert, before you say Go. something, so and I, what I think you're going to say is, <laughs> what I think Robert is going to say, you is, the same say. Mm-hmm. I don't even is, need to talk on this podcast anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to see if I can guess it. Is that I think so? Oh. Rico and Hayato they have that that meeting after the the big the big uh, explosion happens at the, the 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 table in the kitchen they have the meeting in the the the, the boys room and Hayato keeps putting it on Rico saying like hey yeah I'm doing this because you know I'm, I'm worried about your career I'm worried about your career and on the surface it appears that like yeah he just keeps saying that because he's putting it on her and it kind of sounds like bullshit but in reality it's true is what Robert's gonna say and no like, I was he, no okay okay, oh, okay. No. just say what you're gonna say just Robert straight up no okay. yeah <laughs> what I was going to say is, lest we forget, Hayato's been training to be an actor for 10 years. At least. Nah, dude. Nah. Nah. nah I don't not know, man. Because Rico Pan is there, too. It's not just him. There's, nah. There's no let way it, he's an anti-hero. Known. Let it be known. Colin also said earlier in this podcast that based on Hayato's work ethic as a chef, he probably damn near tried his hardest to be an actor and this maybe a- didn't make it because of the whims of Japanese Hollywood. This is a crazy thing you guys are putting out there in the ether. This, I gotta say. this, this is, entire this is career situation suicide. was the ultimate audition. No, no, not that. No, there's no way he's oh, okay. and then he, he sends like, it in. Next thing you know, fucking Hayato is like the biggest actor in ja- Japanese Hollywood. No, because this but, is actually just one giant audition tape. Definitely. Not. Like, here's the thing. Realistically, yes, Hayato is still kind of a sleaze bag for doing all this. I'm not giving him a get out of jail free card. Right. But I do think that there is maybe some water to this antihero theory only because, Jack, you hate him so much. And that's kind of the point of an antihero. Right. To take all of the hate. So everyone He's else a heel. looks good. He's a heel like in wrestling. Exactly. He is a fucking heel. No, I didn't. Yeah. I really didn't hate him until. Until the dinner table, and then I really, really hated him when Rico was just like, to just, so what, were you just messing around with me? You know, that's fucking, yeah. that's some bullshit, dude. Yeah. And, um, I, and Hayato looks so shitty, right? Mm-hmm. And so, anyways, I want to move past this. So, okay. they, <laughs> they basically, he says, he determines, like, oh, I'm going to, we should focus on our careers. We can't be together. Who knows if they hooked up? Who knows if they didn't? You know, the theories are, are out there. But um, it's just shitty all around, guys. And then too little, too late. 
like so many things in Hayato's life, he decides oh, all wow. of a sudden he has he has the talk uh, with his chef friend, his his boss, and his that guy actually talks some sense into him. He's like, "Well, how do you fucking feel? <laughs> you know what I mean, what do you actually <laughs> want? Like, if if her job wasn't a thing, you know, like let's have an adult conversation here." And he's like, "Oh, I guess I like her." Hold, hold. And then he's like, he come he cooks up this con- this uh convoluted way of getting an answer from her right he literally cooks it up right yeah. with the dessert yeah uh so yeah it's at this point now that hayato offers rico this ultimatum i guess of give me a second ultimatums. chance ultimatoes i uh, give me a second chance please if you do i'm going to be staying late at my restaurant on this night Please come by if you're willing to give me a second chance. And thank God that she had that function out of town, too. She needed to get the fuck out of there. Mm. She's with her mom. She's talking. And like her mom said before, like, look, you're 18 years old. Like, you might not feel like you have all the cards on your in, in your hand here, but she really is holding all the cards. She's got time on her side. And she has mm. fame. And she has youth. And she can date anyone, basically, she wants to, essentially. I have and the that's, power and, of God and anime on my side. And her mom realizes that. <laughs> and she's like, listen, honey, you got to just date around. Like, this guy, the fact that he would do this, like, it's not worth your time not anymore. A, like, you should, good, yeah, you should. Not a good look. Yeah. No. Man, I wonder, I wonder what Rico's mom is thinking when she's watching this unfold. Oh, no. Dude, I can only imagine. She's probably drinking. Yo. Let's be clear. Like, what? This is at the very, very end. Like, I still want to talk about, like, how weirdly self-aggrandizing, like, his plan to, like, oh, I'm going to, like, cook you a meal in my restaurant. And, like, you can, and that's how you decide if you want to be with me or not. Like, that was weird to me. But the weirdest thing to me, and the thing that I think was probably the worst thing for both Rico Pin and her mom, is that weird-ass shot at the very end that I didn't understand at first of them, like, spooning bare shouldered wait did what? You, like what? did you guys see that like yeah, i have as, no idea what you're talking about in what? the episode where everyone's leaving the house there's like a little montage and one of those images is of hayato and rico spooning what the f- and it, but, like naked it's wait yeah i gotta wait, see this again wait that's that that wait. was armada martha dude no was okay, it? yeah that was probably armada martha yeah that was armada martha I gotta see this again. That was Armand very short hair. It. Whoa. Well, now I gotta go back and watch that and freeze frame that. I, okay, I, that's what I, I, I thought. Almost, I am almost 99. Per, I like, I'm like 90% sure that was Armand and Martha. Yeah, like, you're Crazy. talking, this is still part of the episode, right? Like, where they're, before they all say goodbye. I can think of the shot in my head. I and think I'm this like, is when everyone's saying bye. Okay, well, it gives us all reason to go check that out now. <laughs> Because that's crazy if it's true. <laughs> I was really I, sure that it was them, and that was kind of like the the what could have been moment oh. no so, i mean because i it wasn't there was a there was a part in the series when like armand don't they talk about armand and martha don't they talk about sleeping in the same room yeah or they were they yeah. were like i remember there was a scene of them spooning in bed i definitely yeah, remember because they were in the i'm not saying yeah, she was i'm in not Armand's saying what daily's bed. bringing up doesn't exist but i just can't picture it but i can picture the one with armand um i don't want to lose a thread though of where we were because this is where rico is out of town She's got a lot of time to think. She's with her best friend in the whole world, who is her mom. And when there's that dynamic in a mother-daughter relationship like that, like if you don't have mom's blessing, you ain't dating the daughter. It ain't, you know yep. what I mean? If she has to pick her mom or or you, chef boy, she's going mom all day. And so that was really where he lost her right then and there. And it See? was it was doomed. I don't know about that because Rico's mom didn't straight up say do not date that. She said you should date around. She gave, he gave she that gave him advice. Fucker. Yeah, yeah she, did, I, she didn't lay it down like that, but she said she made her feelings known. Yeah, but and she I think Rico's gonna pick her mom over over any guy. I oh, how for I, sure, was what I'm saying. So I, anyways, I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Nonetheless, uh, he doesn't. She doesn't go. It's over. Like he, we yeah. get all we get all these awesome shots of this is like my favorite thing in the show probably oh, yes. so all these good. awesome it's shots so and Hayato just alone in the rest, just waiting he's just waiting in the restaurant and it's 
God, it's just so he's cathartic l- and good. He's lamenting. Yeah, they, they make you think. They make you think for a second that Rico's going to show up there, yeah. too. Because they show all the shots of her, like, traveling and, get, like, leaving the station, going down the escalator and, like, yeah. all that stuff. And yeah. she just doesn't show. This is why I'm saying this is, like, literally, like, the most dramatic thing that ever happened. I think the editors, the music was swelling, the way everything was intercut and, and interstitched, I think, was really very like dramatic for lack of a better word i, yeah, I honestly did, really did not nice know show. what was going to happen they were teasing it out and then you just see him there and you think you see her get in the cab but you don't know where she's going and then she shows up in the house in the kitchen and this part i'm just like oh she did it i was like pumping my fist i was like you go she she she's holding all the cards here she's got all the power i was so happy for her that she didn't go back to that guy um again it might have been the big brother and me coming out but the funny part here when she comes to the kitchen for me was that someone was like someone needs to message Tereshima and let her know that he's that she's here and Thomas I was like I already did don't worry yeah, yeah we good we good <laughs> I did deck. it an hour ago yeah. I knew <laughs> yeah she had it on deck I just think it's so funny it's, it's like she had the me. draft ready to go just had to hit send yeah yeah just say oh she's here boom I knew yep. she wouldn't <laughs> Jeez. and that pretty much wraps up the climax of their whole arc here when Hayato comes back home he apologizes to the boys which by the way more fuel to the anti-hero theory in my opinion <laughs> if he were a total shitbag he would not have apologized at he's all. A, he's remorseful but he fucked up oh he did 100% uh, and then he also apologizes to Rico and says okay I accept your decision they probably will never speak to each other again let's be honest Maybe. Probably Hopefully. not. I don't know. Hopefully. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at yeah. that. Yeah, and they yeah. had to live, like, together for a while. This wasn't just the end of the show. Like, they were there probably, it seemed like, maybe a week or maybe even two. It uh, was just awkward. A week or two. Because yeah, they're in a house with two couples in love. Yeah. Two couples in heaven, one couple in hell, I think, as Yama said. And that about wraps it up, right? That's about it for I mean, Rico that's, and that's pretty much it. We get, the, we get the cleaning montage at the end where everyone's cleaning the house. Yeah, and the yeah. kitchen and the bathroom was really gross, dirty. Go back and watch it. Yeah, it was, it was oh really my dirty. God. It like, was. if you want it a was... horror, that's what horror. The it was hell? pretty yeah, the damn sink, gross. The shower, the toilet. Don't look at the toilet. Just Why don't. was it red? Who was bleeding from the <laughs> mouth? Like, oh, oh, it was weird. That was Hayato's heart. Really? Yeah, it was fucking yeah, it's, grime yeah. buildup. There it is. Yeah. Apparently. Right. They clean the so, pool. Hated it. The so it. that's the tale of the 18 year old idol and the anti hero. He ain't no hero to me. No, he ain't no hero to me. Well, either way, this is a good tale in what to not do if the thought, at least she's legal, pops up in your head. Robert, Robert, like, yeah. Are you saying that Terashima is the chef boy we deserve, not or the chef boy we need, not the chef boy we deserve? No, he's the chef boy RD. No, okay. I'm saying I was he's gonna like, say that. I was gonna say that damn it daily. <laughs> I'm I'm damn saying it. he's the chef we didn't need, the chef we didn't deserve, but the chef who did the best damage control he could with the tools given to him and the mistakes he made. You give him so much credit. He Maybe. just needs to stick to making ravioli. <laughs> Has he made, did he make ravioli on the show once? He made he made pasta. Yep, all pasta is ravioli, I guess. Now I want ravioli. <laughs> Give me the formuoli. Yeah, someone had to say it. Uh, that about wraps us up, though, for this climactic episode of Rico and Hayato. Uh, you can tell a friend, spread the word. That'd be great. It would help us out and mean a lot more than you know. If not, maybe tell a stranger by leaving a review on iTunes. You know, it it bolster a lot of our kind of uh, our clout online. And, you know, we do everything here independently. This is all just on us. You know, we don't really have a network helping us out or anything like that. So every bit of support would be greatly appreciated. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, theories to match the anti-hero theory of Hayato, uh, please, you can email any and all of those things to us at questions at terracehousepodcast.com. You can catch us next Tuesday where we're going to talk about the best moments of boys and girls in the city. We're going to do a holistic overview. We've gone through the entire season. It was... Woo! Crazy, but also very fun, and so glad we got to talk about two of the biggest incidents in Terrace House history. Ow. Incidents. Real, real, yeah. real quick, real quick, daily. So now mm. that you've seen BGITC, what would you give it out of ten? The whole thing. Mm. The whole yeah. thing. Oh wait, wait, wait! Save it till next week. <gasps> Cliffhanger. Okay, yes. yeah, we'll save it till next week. I want to know your thoughts in, compared to ONG. Uh, this has been Tadaima. 
Thanks for listening. Itekimasu. Aloha, it's me. <laughs> that was a shirt. Email us at questions at terracehousepodcast.com. Follow us on Instagram at Tadimogram, on Twitter at Tadimapod, and check us out on Facebook and YouTube at Tadima, a Terrace House Podcast. <laughs>